In this problem, we're told a softball player swings a bat, accelerating it from rest to 2.7 revolutions per second in a time of 0.2 seconds. Approximate the bat as a 2.2 kilogram uniform rod of length, 0.95 meters, and compute the torque the player applies to one end of it. So essentially what we're trying to do in this problem is solve for torque. So we're trying to find torque, but let's go ahead and write down what we're given first. So what are we given? So we're given the angular velocity initially, right? So it's going to start from rest of our bat. So W sub zero is going to be zero, and I'm going to write it in radians per second. And then the final, we could say, the final angular velocity, it's going to go to 2.7 revolutions per second, right? So it's going to start at this, go to this in terms of angular velocity. And the time this is going to take, we're just going to call it delta T, is 0.2 seconds. So we know that. And we also know the length of our bat, which is 2.2 kg, or sorry, it's going to be 0.95 meters. Sorry about that. So 0.95 meters, and then we know the mass of it. The mass is going to be 2.2 kilograms. So how do we solve this problem? So we're trying to find torque. And in order to solve this, you need to know the formula for torque, or one of the formulas, which is going to be torque is equal to inertia times angular acceleration, or alpha. So what we can do is solve for this uh, because Notice how we're given angular velocity, and we're given it at two times, and we're given the time it tell, uh, takes. We can solve for alpha. And then inertia, uh, we can also solve for, uh, solve for since we have the length and the mass. So that's why we know to use this formula. But let's go ahead and solve. So let's start off with solving for uh, alpha, or angular acceleration. So what is angular acceleration? Well, we know it's going to be the change in the angular velocity, or omega, over the change in time. right? And we know the time it's going to change. It's going to go... 0.2 seconds, and then we got to find the change in uh, the angular velocity. But keep in mind, we need it to be in radians per second uh, because this is going to be needed to be in radians per second squared. So this has to be in radians per second, but this is in revolutions per second. So let's convert that. So 2.7 revolutions per second, we need it in radians. So we know there's one revolution is equal to 2 pi radians. So if we just multiply by 2 pi, essentially that's just going to cancel out the revolutions. So what you want to do is just do 2.7 and multiply by 2 pi. So if you go ahead and do this, you'll get 16.9646. Uh, and then this is going to be uh, radians per second, right? And so the change in angular velocity is the final angular velocity minus the initial angular velocity. So the final is going to be, we just have it right here, 16.964 minus and then initially it's zero so really it's just equal to uh, this minus zero is just that number so 16.9646 radians per second over 0.2 seconds so go ahead and do this 16.9646 divided by 0.2 you're going to get 84.823 and then radians per second divided by second is radians per second squared right so i'm just going to write it yeah, like this, radians per second squared, uh, that's going to be alpha. So we know the angular acceleration now. Now we need to find the inertia. So how do we find the inertia? So as you know, or you should know, that there's different equations in, uh, for inertia depending on the type of object that you're using. So in this case, we have a uniform rod, right? So there's different equations depending on the type of object and where you apply the torque. So in this case, we have a uniform rod, and we're applying it to one of the ends. So there's a specific formula I recommend looking in your textbook. They should have a chart labeling all the equations you use depending on the type of object. And in this case, uh, based on what they tell us, right? So it's a uniform rod and we're applying it to one end of it. The formula you use is one third mass times length squared. So this is the formula you use in order to calculate the inertia for this type of object. So let's go ahead and do that, right? So we have the mass. And then the length they give us two, so we can just calculate. So one over three, multiply that by the mass, which is two point two. Make sure this is in kg and meters. So uh, times 0.95 squared. So if you go ahead and do this, right? So do one over three, one over three times two point two times 0.95 squared. Yeah, so if you go ahead and do this, you're going to get 0.66183. So this is going to be your inertia. And so what we want to do now is um, 
plug it in. So let's just go ahead and plug it in. Uh, right, so torque is going to be equal to the inertia, which is 0.66183. Multiply that by uh, angular acceleration, which is 84.823. 84.823. Yeah, so if you go ahead and do this, you're going to get 56.13868 and so on. I'm just going to round to 56. So 56, and then our units for this is going to be in uh, Newton meters. So Newton meters, uh, yeah, so this right here is going to be your answer. So 56 Newton meters, and yeah, hopefully you found this uh, video useful.